I'd like to say thank you for the invitation to speak this evening. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. I would like to thank Her Excellency, Excellency sorry, Yvonne Walks, Barbados High Commissioner in Canada, thank you, and the Honorable Hainsey Ben, Council General for Barbados at Toronto. I would like to thank David Vaughn for the invitation, much appreciated, thank you very much, and all of those of the Hamilton Association. And by sheer coincidence, I would like to thank my mother, who happens to be the MC. <laughs> it has been a long time since I've been to an independent banquet. A very long time. And I think it's fitting that it happens to be the time I come back to be on Remembrance Day. I know the significance of this day is to remember those war veterans who fought for this country. But this evening, I would like to remember how I and we got here. I would like to remember what my parents and all those in this room did to get me where I am today. For those who are here in this room today, I would like to say thank you. For those who are not, Let's all remember what they did for this organization, this community, Barbados, and this country we call Canada as immigrant ambassadors. And it's key why I want to introduce this history from my book. We were not supposed to be here. It's not water. We were not supposed to be educated. We were seen as property. And we are here now. You need to remember that. These are the pioneers that faced daily belts of racism, sexism, and discrimination to get us, me, to the point where I am now. So thank you. But, and it's a big but, we, as Barbadian Canadians, we, as black Canadians, we, as black people, have a problem. As I stand here today thanking you all for what you have done, I also stand here with disappointment, embarrassment, and shame. What? I work at the Anti-Racism Directorate. I don't know if you folks are familiar with it. We just passed in June 1st, 2017, the Anti-Racism Act, the first act against racism in this country. We should be proud of that. However, our black youth, specifically our black West Indian, our black Barbadian youth are in trouble. We don't hear about it on a daily basis, but I see it. Outside of our indigenous peoples in this country, black youth have the highest incarceration rates, the highest dropout rates, and one of the most troubling figures that we do have, particularly in Toronto, is that the third generation of black West Indian students fare the worst of all groups in the school system. The third generation. That's trouble. Well, I understand, and we must understand this is due to systemic racism. This is due to systemic anti-black racism. We must acknowledge this and keep it in our conversations. Talk to our kids and our grandkids and let them know that to this day, similar to like during slavery, when we were not supposed to survive, this system does not want us to succeed. We must remember that. I have a PhD. I'm a professor. I'm a senior policy advisor. Permanent, by the way. I'm not on no contracts. I'm permanent. I have a job. I got a pension. I have everything. 
<laughs> in the highest and most prestigious office in the government of Ontario. But at the end of the day, I'm still black. I can't change that. At the end of the day, My parents are from Barbados. I'm Barbadian Canadian. Full stop. I'm still seen as a threat. The same threat that slavery, colonialism, and white supremacy have tried to destroy for generations and will continue to attempt to destroy. But I'm still here. We're still here, and we're not going anywhere. Why? Because I draw my strength from you in this room. The generations that came before me, the immigrant ambassadors, for those who came here with little to nothing, besides your educations and the will to succeed, I draw my strength from you, all of you, your histories and your stories. Your histories and your stories of coming to the dark and cold abyss of the great white north, from the warmth of the shores of the beautiful Barbados. We as second and third generation Barbadian Canadians and all black people in this country are dying. It is not by the bullet of a police officer, is from the daily tortures of racism and exclusion. We are pleading for help. We are asking for change. But in addition to these asks and these demands, I argue that the strength needs to come from within. It needs to come from people like you in this room. Those who fought to become the teachers, the nurses, the government workers, the bankers, the outstanding citizens of this country, we need that strength from you. But it has to come as a united collective. At the end of the day, in this country we call Canada, no one cares what school you went to. No one cares if you grew up in town or in the country. No one cares. They look at me and they see what? Blackness. Nothing more and nothing less. So let's remember that. Let's put aside our differences and remember what unites us. As we heard earlier, education unites us. Historically, currently, education has always been the key to prosperity in Barbados and Barbadians abroad. A sense of pride, a sense of industry, unites us. So let's remember that. Let's remember what you did to get us here. But at the same time, as we remember, it's our time. It's the second and the third and now the fourth generation, the children, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren. It is our time. It is our time to succeed. But that strength we need from you. You must tell us your stories. You must guide us. You must give us strength. We need that from you. So tonight, I challenge you. Each and every one of you in this room, I challenge you to write down your stories.
put pen to paper, a voice to record it, I challenge you because we need to know. Because when you are gone, how are we gonna, going to know where we came from and what God is here and what will get us to the next step? We're not learning these histories in our classrooms. No one is telling us about the emigrant ambassadors. No one's telling us about Pharaoh. No one's telling us about Busta and Manny Griggs. No one. But these are our positive role models. These are the people that we will draw strength from so no one can tell us that, okay, Obama was the first black president, now you should be happy. No, we've had black leaders for centuries. We need to know that. We need to know what you did to get here. We need to know what you did as domestics in 1955, or as farm workers. The sacrifices you had to make to come here and leave your family behind so you could bring them here and they can have a better future. But if you don't tell us, how are we going to know? We need to know where we came from so we can know where we are going.